You are watching Coffer 2, and this is your quick before you buy it video for Vienna Connection. In Vienna Connection, players are members of a CIA spy team tasked with solving mysteries during the 1970s Cold War in Europe. Released in 2021, Vienna Connection is a narrative mystery game with minimal strategic choices and minimal gameplay complexity but high requirements for mental gymnastics, deduction, and detailed note-taking. It requires use of an online website for certain puzzles and narrative elements. It's essentially a solo game, but benefits from group discussions, and so is recommended for cooperative groups of from one to five players. The game is presented as a campaign of four sequential missions, each of which will take you anywhere from two to six hours of play and can only be played once. You'll begin each of the four missions by opening the corresponding mission envelope and revealing a full page mission briefing and a list of any special rules for the current mission. The mission briefing will also provide you with your initial set of available leads that can be followed. You'll also receive a number of starting resource tokens and a set of optional operation cards that cost resources and represent special operations you can conduct to gather information. On each turn, you will choose a specific lead card to read and resolve. Most leads will require you to check boxes in a specific zone, depending on the nature of the lead. Different zones have different numbers of check boxes available. So, for example, red zone leads may involve gathering intelligence in hostile territories, and you may only have time to pursue one of those leads. When all of the zone check boxes are filled, you will begin marking boxes in the man in black section. And when they are filled, your time is up and you'll have to submit your final report. Lead cards are filled with unfolding narratives, but will also occasionally present you with a mathematical riddle to solve, or a code to decipher, or a memory quiz where you have to remember some detail that you've just read. Lead cards will also frequently direct you to retrieve a full-sized sheet of paper from the 100-page file stack. These pages contain narrative information in various forms, such as transcripts, timetables, personnel files, etc. By following leads and gathering information, you will gradually piece together the clues to the mysteries you are investigating. You will also occasionally get the opportunity to conduct one or more operations available for each mission by spending limited resource tokens. Operations may lead to further information, but also carry risks of changing the storyline for the worse. You will only have enough game turns to follow a very limited subset of leads, and the major decisions you will be making in the game involve your decision on each turn regarding which lead to pursue next. Games of Vienna Connection are not won or lost. You won't be graded on your performance. It's a narrative game where your actions affect which loose ends of the mysteries are wrapped up and which are left unresolved. When your game clock runs out, you will go to the game website to read story endings that may vary depending on which leads you have pursued. You will also choose from several recommended follow-up actions you would like your superiors to pursue, which will affect the narrative story that unfolds. It's hard to identify real strategic decisions in Vienna Connection. Most of the decisions you make will revolve around do you want to chase down this lead or this lead? You won't have time for both. And there's a little bit of cleverness in the fact that there are these different zones. You have a certain amount of time or turns in each zone. But most of your decisions won't be motivated so much by logic and deduction, but by more the psychological weight of, do you want to wrap up this loose end? Do you want to find out what happens here or here? And your sort of gut intuition about which leads are more, are more likely to yield fruit. That's not to say that there isn't some deduction and mystery solving. There is. It's just hard to justify, um, it's hard to predict which lead is going to yield more information. There's a surprise around every corner. No matter what branch of the narrative you go down, you are going to find some interesting information. There are also these uh, operation uh, 
cards, again, you can see how the game is very tightly wound in terms of making you agonize over what actions to take because you're never going to be able to do all of them. And this game really leans on that. So you've got these operations, you might be able to conduct one of them. Again, it's much more of a psychological and intuitive, intuitive motivation over which one is likely to yield an interesting result. It's hard to classify any of your decisions as being right or wrong. It's more what branch of the narrative you're gonna go down. If you're interested in game design, there actually are some very clever little twists that Ignacy has added to this um, narrative detective genre. The most notable one being this idea that you aren't going to have players answer a quiz at the end to see whether they figured out and solved the mystery, but rather depending on which branches they go down and what leads they follow, they'll get different narrative story that will unfold. And that's quite interesting. Vienna Connection is not the best narrative detective game for those interested in sort of hardcore deduction and mystery solving. For that, I might recommend Chronicles of Crime series or the Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective series like Dave Neal's Baker Street Irregulars box. It also doesn't have the best story and writing. For that, again, I would point you to Dave Neal's box for Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, The Baker Street Irregulars, and maybe even if you can get your hands on the 1985 um, detective game called Gumshoe, which we did a playthrough of on the channel. Um, but it does occupy a unique spot in this genre. I know of no other game set in the 70s Cold War and most of these games are detective, detective solving crime, whereas this is Spycraft, which does put a completely different twist on how it feels and sort of what the morality of what's going on is. Um, and if you play these games for the sort of immersion in this world, this game really does succeed. And this stack of documents is sort of the highlight of the game, these full page documents. If you like sort of wallowing in an overload of information and looking for needles in haystacks and feeling like you're actually behind the scenes searching through reams and reams of data, looking for something, looking for that one clue that cracks the case open. This game very much does succeed. There are some mechanics in this game that sort of tie back to the 1985 gumshoe that serve to immerse you in the world. And some of them are just sort of busy work, like these reading, um, deciphering messages, which aren't really mental puzzles to solve, but they're sort of tradecraft work that you learn how to do and makes you feel like you're in this world. There are some misses. Um, there's a memory element occasionally in this game that feels very harshly punishing and sort of wastes your time on much of it, but it's not completely unthematic. And there's a puzzle fragment sort of word letters putting together that feels like a miss, a missed and a missed opportunity. Overall though, it is a unique experience. It's not a game that's going to work for everyone, but if you like this genre of detective narrative type games, then it is a must play. And I've had a lot of fun playing it. You can watch a live stream nine hour playthrough of mission one that I did. And um, soon I'll put a review of the entire campaign and we'll see you in the next video.